In a previous video, we had a look at the uh, NetIQ Playground tool. Uh, the URL of that video is shown below. Uh, with the NetIQ Playground tool, what you could do is you could set up uh, an application in a Tomcat environment and simulate all sorts of OAuth requests. So you can have a play with the OAuth protocol to figure out uh, the exchange of information that goes on. And then you can use that information to build it into your own uh, application that you're developing using OAuth. The downside of the NetIQ Playground tool is that it requires a Tomcat environment. So you have to install this application on top of a Tomcat environment in order to play around with it. Google has its own equivalent. It's the Google Developers OAuth 2 Playground tool. In, with this tool, you do not have to install a separate application. You can actually do everything from the web. The limitation of using the Google Developer OAuth Playground tool is that your IDP server must be in the public domain because the IDP server has to be able to communicate with uh, the Google Playground tool. So let's take a look at this. Here's the link here, developersgoogle.com OAuth Playground. And that's where you would go into initially. Then you would click on, uh, I beg your pardon, you click on this particular link here and you'd populate a number of different uh, fields in here. So uh, you can look at basically server-side flow or client-side flow. Uh, you have the OAuth endpoints by default, they're set to Google, but we're gonna set them to custom here. And as part of these custom endpoints, we're gonna put in some key URLs from our environment. So let me just cut and paste here. I'll go back to it. So the authorization endpoint will be uh, the AuthZ token endpoint will be the token endpoint here. We'll have a client ID and a client secret. Now the client ID and client secret come from the IDP server itself. So you have to go over and you have to register the application. So we covered this in yesterday's in the uh, NetIQ Playground video where you register the application. So here I've already registered the Google Playground application. I'm going to take a look at the client ID and the client secret. So there is the client ID and secret. And in fact, just to simplify it, I'm going to cut and paste from here and add it to, the, so that's the client ID and the secret is, so I'll cut and paste that and import the secret here. So now I'm, I'm set uh, as far as the key endpoints and the ID and secret used to authenticate the application to the IDP server. So now I can define, I can actually use an existing scope. These are scopes that are available over on the Google app side, uh, on the Google Playground side, or I can put my own scopes in. So for example, I'll put in the profile scope. Uh, the profile scope is one of the default scopes available on the NAM IDP server. So if you go into the OAuth tab, you look at the resource server, the resource server will actually give you uh, an identity server. And in here, you'll have a look at all the predefined scopes that we have and what attributes the scope send back. So in here, I'm going to select the profile scope and associated with the profile scope, I have the following attributes. So when I log in and, I'm, and I authorize the app, access to the application for the uh, profile uh, scope, I should theoretically be able to retrieve these attributes for the user that's logged in. So let's go back here. I've put the uh, profile. So now I'm going to click on the authorization API. And it's going to generate an OAuth request over to my IDP server. So of course, I don't have an authentication session on the IDP server, so I'm going to log in there. So I'll log in first so that the IDP server is able to validate the request. And as it processes the OAuth request, it recognizes that this application, that's the application, our Google Auth application, is trying to access my profile information. So that's coming from the scope information for this particular user. So if I approve that, I will now send back uh, an authorization code to the application. To, read, to redirect URI of the application. And now, because I'm using the authorization ground flow, I, I can actually use that authorization code to generate a request to get the access token. Because in any OAuth environment, the ho whole objective is to get an access token. Once you have that access token, you can pass it on to the backend resource server. You can get a lot of user-specific information. You're, you've, you've authorized, basically, to that backend. 
So let's click on that and we'll get access to the token. So this is what the token looks like. Uh, there is an access token. It's telling me the type of token it is. It's valid for this length of time. I've also generated a, a refresh token associated with it. So I can use a refresh token to regenerate a new access token. And this is the scope that I'm authorized for. So I can get a lot of that information if I go back to the endpoints here. I can go to, for example, the token, in, the token info endpoint. And I can actually pass this token to token info endpoint. And it'll give me some additional information. Who the user is, again, who the audience is, the token ID associated. There's the scope profile and who issued the request. I can also go to the user info endpoint, for example, and user info endpoint. I can send the request and I should get some attribute information back. So I'm actually sending it to user info, info endpoint. I'm passing in the token. And in here, you can see this is the token here passed in the authorization bearer header. And the response from that user info endpoint are basically the attributes that are available in that um, in that in that profile scope. So again, what you can do is you can use this tool. You, you do not need any applications installed on a, you know, a, a separate box. You can use a web, an existing web-based application, but the IDP server that we're talking to must be sitting on the uh, public network.